It turns out that for people delivering holiday packages, the last mile is the most challenging, which is why an increasing number of those deliveries don't involve people at all. John Blackstone reports our cover story. It's morning in Berkeley, California, and the Kiwi bots are heading off to work. These four-wheeled robots navigate sidewalks and even crosswalks, taking food to hungry college students. <laughs> and this is the future. And this is the future. This is exactly. the future of delivery. Exactly, yeah. It's a real-world test of delivery by robot that sometimes <laughs> collides with reality. The reality today is that delivery is a bigger business than ever. With online shopping, it's estimated the post office, FedEx, and UPS will process, sort, and deliver more than 2 billion packages between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. Amazon's own fleet of delivery trucks is expected to handle 275 million holiday season shipments. And Amazon is pushing the delivery envelope offering Prime members free one-day shipping. You have to offer free delivery now to be competitive, it seems. Yeah. And it's not reasonable, because it's expensive to deliver stuff. Yeah, and it's never free, right? It costs money. The question is, where do you get that money from? There are several campuses. And Goodchild is director of the Supply Chain, Transportation, and Logistics Center at the University of Washington. The growth in home delivery is focusing attention on what logistics experts call the last mile. So they don't mean literally a mile. They mean the last piece of this supply chain. And the reason it's interesting is it's the most expensive mile of the whole thing. I've seen estimates of more than 50% of the cost is from that last mile. It's expensive because it's labor intensive. There's a driver who takes every package up to the front door. It's estimated that free shipping will cost Amazon more than a billion dollars this quarter alone. Which explains why shippers are looking at some radical new technologies to cut the cost of the last mile. This is the delivery drone that's going to be delivering to homes all across America. Matthew Sweeney is founder and CEO of a delivery drone startup called Flirty. We've been secretly testing this technology in the desert for years, and this is the first time a film crew has come out and see it. He predicts that by Christmas 2020, many packages will be delivered this way. Ready for the release? And here it is. There we go. Let's see what we got here. We've got two flirty shirts. <laughs> We've also got a fragile flirty mug. I was kind of hoping for pizza. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> in fact, they did it in New Zealand in 2016, delivering pizza in a test of an earlier model drone. And the drone does not expect a tip. The labor cost of a drone delivery is less than the labor cost of any other form of delivery because the technology is autonomous. It flies itself. Flirty's drone is guided by GPS. Sweeney won't reveal how much weight it can carry, but claims it can handle about 75% of all deliveries made in the U.S. today. The drone takes off from and lands on what Flirty calls a portal. Our vision is to have a portal at every mall across America. You know, every FedEx or UPS for package delivery. Our mission is, is to deliver whatever you want when you want it. Six years ago, Jeff Bezos unveiled Amazon's drone project. But Flirty is part of an FAA program with fast-track approval for commercial drone delivery and expects to beat Amazon with airborne deliveries. In Berkeley, the delivery robots roaming the streets are in close proximity to people. That is what's being tested. So this is a common sight in Berkeley now, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, what's the reaction of people when they see these? Yeah, people are, are very curious, yeah. And the, so far, the reaction and people in Berkeley have been very good. Felipe Chavez moved from Colombia with the dream of building his robot delivery company close to Silicon Valley. His Kiwi bots deliver food within about a mile of the University of California campus here. So there'll be a time we'll walk up and down the street passing robots and nobody will even notice. Literally, literally. And sometimes that happens here in Berkeley. People, like at the beginning, a lot of people were taking photos, super excited, and like now, for some people, it's just normal. Yeah. A robot 
delivering a burrito, it's just normal. Exactly. One advantage of drones and robots, they can deliver on demand when someone is home to receive the package. That could help combat porch pirates, the thieves who see any newly delivered cardboard box as an irresistible opportunity. Logistics expert Ann Goodchild looks at all those cardboard boxes and sees something else, the environmental impact. I think it's a good time to be in the cardboard industry. And I do hope that we can move to more reusable materials. The industry is still working this out. Home delivery, however, may be better for the environment than customers driving their own cars to shop. Trucks are bigger, trucks are heavier, trucks are more polluting. But we have to remember that that truck is actually like a bus for groceries. That truck is visiting many homes. And what our research shows is that the truck is more efficient. But that advantage can be lost in the rush for ever faster delivery. So one hour delivery, two hour delivery is not reducing congestion and is not reducing emissions. So there's no efficiency in that. The way there is efficiency in a milkman who can deliver to 40, 50 homes in a single trip. Indeed, let us not forget the milkman. Well, I've been at it for three years, John, and I haven't soured on it yet, so. <laughs> Along with his puns, Eric McGillicott delivers organic milk in glass bottles in the San Francisco area. It's just a lot easier to have it delivered. Plus, I mean, people like the old school aspect of it, of, you know, getting a milk delivery. He brings a gallon to Paula Gillespie's house once a week. It's fantastic. It seems a little anachronistic today. Yes, well, that would be me. <laughs> I fit right in with that. <laughs> There's these robots that deliver things I, I to people. I hate it. I hate it. So this is fulfilling a need that, in, in my opinion, is counterproductive to society, at least the society that I know and love. And it does not include robots and drones. Do you really think that's possible, that a drone could put you out of business one day? Yeah, at some point. But I should be retired by then, hopefully.